what I found was so simple that I it blew my mind. I was always intimidated by homemade homemade anything really, right. but yeah. homemade laundry detergent because you think like, oh, it's got to be eighteen thousand things that I have to go to. Oh well, yeah, and chemistry was my worst subject. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. And it just seems like, oh, I'm going to ruin my clothes if I do it wrong, whatever. But what I found, you literally need two ingredients. What? No pre-mixing required. Okay. Hello, Kat. Hello, Tiffany. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. I had a uh, fun president's day oh good we're recording on president's day (laughs) yes happy president's day everyone to those who observe (laughs) do you have a favorite president um i gotta throw it throw it out there for jimmy carter yeah just went into hospice but i know such a good man he was i think he was totally underrated for his time and i think i think we we all look back and like he was he was treated wrong by the Washington establishment. Agreed. And um, I actually, I didn't meet him, but I saw him speak at my uh, think tank job when I lived in D.C. So, Oh, cool. That must have been awesome. I just think he, it, like, he just hangs out and does charity work all the time. Just Habitat yeah. for Humanity. Yeah. What a nice I saw a video person. where he showed up after a fall. His eye was all bruised. And he's like, I'm here, though. Here yep. I am yep it's crazy yeah it really is inspiring because it's like so many other presidents and i don't blame them i mean they're probably exhausted but yeah just kind of like you know fall back into the shadows and like or live a very private life which is fine but or do giant tours making millions of dollars you know he's not making millions of dollars at habitat for humanity and like yeah totally exactly do you have a favorite president i mean like i think i feel like Grover Cleveland is just the funniest name I've ever heard. <laughs> but uh, no, I, you know, once you start studying presidents, you're like, well, well, they were men, normal men. I think some, some did some pretty interesting good things, but it's kind of hard to be like excited about U.S. presidents sometimes. It's yeah, totally. Like, uh, yeah. It's kind of like always a mixed bag, like with any, any human. Yeah. It's always a mixed exactly. bag. I probably should have come up with a better answer than that. But. You know, I like Grover. He's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know anything about him, but. Yeah. Oh, actually, I did read a book about. I'm not going to remember. My brain is totally fried. Yeah, it's yeah, it's uh, it's late in the evening on a Monday, President's yeah. Day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The child is asleep. The brain is shut off. Yeah. yeah, the brain has stopped. Although the brain has to start working again because I have a story for you. Ooh. Well, maybe we should introduce what we're doing. This yeah, is yeah, we should greening up my act. Welcome. We Thanks. talk about green products and green living and we research them and try to figure out if they are actually good for the environment or not even good for the environment because that doesn't exist but yeah better for the environment less harmful yeah yes or if they work work (laughs) period or if it's just a bunch of marketing because we are two marketers and we can sometimes see through some of this the bs when we read (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah we actually read the fine print yeah. right but who has time for that we do so that's why we're here <laughs> exactly that's what we're here for yeah so we're trying to do the research that nobody else has time for because yeah. this stuff matters but my goodness are we all busy and i think this week's episode is proof that there is so much research to be done yes <laughs> holy cow you've seen my notes <laughs> yes <laughs> So tell me, Tiffany, what are we talking about this evening? We are talking about homemade laundry detergent. And it is the thing. I'm very excited because it's the thing that got me into green housekeeping to begin with. Oh, this was your gateway drug? It was, totally. And because it's all about like sticking it to the man in a little, in (laughs) quite a few ways. I'll show it. I'll uh, explain that. And minimalism, sustainability, and science. So it's kind of like all those things in one, which is exciting. Hashtag science. Hashtag science. And what I found was so simple that it blew my mind. 
it was That's just it's literally dream. yeah like i always thought i was always intimidated by homemade homemade anything really right but yeah. homemade laundry detergent because you think like oh it's got to be eighteen thousand things that i have to go to oh well, yeah and chemistry was my worst subject <laughs> yeah <laughs> ever <laughs> it's like magic to me i was like this is alchemy i don't understand Right. And it just seems like, oh, I'm going to ruin my clothes if I do Mm -hmm. it wrong, whatever. But what I found, you literally need two ingredients. And I gave you a homework assignment. So hopefully that went okay. And I want to hear how it went. Yeah. But two ingredients, no pre-mixing required. Mm. Wow. So yeah, because I was like, man, I can't, I don't have time to like mix all this stuff and make. So my mom had made her own homemade detergent before and you might have seen this even some people try this it was literally a five gallon muck uh five gallon bucket muck it of, yeah, so I think yeah it's muck a it. yeah. <laughs> literally <laughs> just a bucket of muck and it was just this huge it's like science experiment of yeah. <laughs> just sitting in your laundry gelatin room. like it just turned into this jello disgusting Ooh, waiting for the had... dog to drown in it just terrible yes little it was yeah. crazy and then i kind of found out as i was doing the research that, that 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 actual that exact recipe is really bad for your washing machine so i Ooh. wouldn't recommend going that route if you've heard of that or seen that around on the interwebs yeah so yeah when i was doing research i read an article from apartment therapy which is mm-hmm. a i have a love hate relationship with apartment therapy fair if you've ever read that blog, yeah, I had to take had to take a sippy. Um, right. still fighting off cold, but oh, sorry. Yeah, but yeah. So I learned that first off, some liquid laundry detergents are made from oil, Ooh. and that the directions that they give us on a Tide or something, it's way too much. So like two things, some are made from oil, and also we use way too much. Yeah. So even if we use a the amount that it tells us to on the directions we're using too much and it builds up on our clothing Mm -hmm. which is why people i never did this and i never would but some people do strip their fabrics have you heard of this yeah i would never take the time to do that but i know i know know it's just one more thing of laundry i have to do no thank you yes i'm not that into my clothes looking fresh i guess but i don't i don't know but yeah i think that's why people have to do that and i don't know exactly what goes into stripping your fabric but it's because this type of detergent builds up on the clothes yeah i want to add on to that something i learned too when you use too much soap it actually takes longer for your clothes to dry in the dryer too oh so that's even worse right you're adding to your electric bill and yeah yeah carbon carbon footprint by that is fascinating yeah i think it's again because of the oils and things yeah it would make sense yeah and then the the real kicker for me was that i learned that the unconcentrated form of liquid detergent so the one that's in the huge like yeah you know giant bulky container is up to 90 percent water wow and so you're paying for that. You're paying for yep. water. You're storing that water in your house somewhere. You're yeah. truck paying for trucking. It's got to be shipped with using yeah. gasoline, like all of these things. And it's just for, for water. So that that really wow. opened my eyes. And I was like, yeah. holy shit, like 90% of this is water. Maybe there's a better way. Yeah. And it turns out there is. <laughs> <laughs> dish, dish, tell us. <laughs> Okay, so seriously, super simple. It's two ingredients, like I said, and those ingredients, I'll go ahead and tell you, are washing soda and dish soap. Uh, Not even brand names, just... (laughs) It doesn't matter. Washing soda. I mean, most washing soda that people buy is by Arm & Hammer, but yeah, yeah, dish soap, like what you clean your dishes with. It turns out the chemicals the chemistry of it is almost exactly the same as your laundry detergent oh okay isn't that crazy that's so so simple yeah yeah so i like looked all into this chemistry part of things and detergent only needs three things to work really well okay these things are gonna be kind of like big words but surfactants alkalis and catalytic enzymes so surfactants are basically soap Surface surface scrubbers. Yes, surface. I had it in here and got rid of it. 
surface extractants or something. So there's soap. They break up stains. They prevent dirt from redepositing on the fabric. That's all a surfactant is. Mm -hmm. Some of them are made from petroleum. Some of them are made from plants like coconut, soybean, palm. Okay. And there are two different kinds of surfactants. One is ionic. One is anionic. So ionic has the molecules contain a charge. Remember this back from chemistry? Probably not because you said you hated it. I'm having PTSD. I'm like flashbacks. Like (gasps) ions. Ions. Yeah. So basically all you need to know is that anionic is better for hard water. Okay. But I think you can kind of use either um, because there is no rule to this. You can use whatever works for you. One is not going to blow up your washing machine. Exactly. Well, maybe the other, the big gelatinous goop might, but (laughs) these will not. And so the anionic ones are usually called ethers of fatty alcohols. I have this entire article from the spruce that I'm going to link, and it's really amazing because it breaks down every single ingredient in laundry detergent, like kind of like I'm doing now, but in more detail. And they just kind of show you like what's in it and what everything does. Wow. The only thing that I need to add in here that I found out since I wrote these notes is that anionic surfactants, Mm -hmm. (laughs) the ones I'm talking about that's better for hard water, some of them are not great for your, uh, for like discharging into waterways. Okay. Yeah. Septic so, systems or waterways. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll get into that a little bit later, but just know that there are different kinds. And I'll, I'm going to tell you how to tell what's good and what's not good. Ooh. Okay. I know. And I think we should have a whole episode on this because it took a while for me to figure out how to, how to t- actually tell. Oh, yeah. How, how to, to read labels. Yeah. Yes. 100%. So. The other, so that's surfactants. Next is alkalis. Okay. All that an alkali does is neutralizes acid, but in the laundry, it removes dirt and stains from fabric. So basically, alkali, complicated word, all it is is either baking soda, washing soda, or borax. Okay. So, so far we have soap and we have baking soda, washing soda, or borax. Soda. Soda. Soap and soda. (laughs) Exactly. So those are two. The next one, honestly, from what I found, is optional. Okay. So they're catalytic enzymes. They do help clean, especially in cool water. Okay. I always wash – I don't wash anything in warm water anymore. Me neither. I started washing in cold, and I think it's – I think it's way better. Yeah. Because I think that's – the most energy that's used is heating the water, heating the water. Exactly. So enzymes can help that, but honestly, I don't really use them and it's fine. Mm -hmm. So I'll I'll get into that a little bit more. Okay. Sorry. I got to clear my nose. Oh yeah. (laughs) The cold, (laughs) the cold wreaks havoc. The cold. So, so the catalytic catalytic enzymes are called, they're going to be called like protease, amylase, mayonnaise. There's like all these. Mayonnaise. 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 (laughs) Hey, I have some of that in my fridge. I'd like it in my sandwich. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But the spruce breaks down all of the, the spruce article. So if you are really curious about it. So there's not much, at least when I looked, this was again like a year ago. So there wasn't much of a market for this stuff by itself. So it was kind of hard to find like an enzyme powdered form that you can buy. Yes, exactly. I did find one, but it was hard to find. I think I saw some more options these days. So the other things that serve no purpose that most detergents have is fragrances and dyes. So your turns out your laundry detergent doesn't actually need to be like dark blue to function. (laughs) It's just to, you know, make it pretty in your closet that you care about so much. (laughs) Exactly. And stain everything and get all over everything. I hate yeah. dyed. It, like gets oh, on God. everything. It's gross. Yeah. It, like leaks everywhere. Mm-hmm. So they also have other things like preservatives, mm-hmm. which sounds really weird. Apparently, it's to limit the growth of bacteria. Which makes sense. It does. And actually, I'm pretty sure that the like dish soap has preservatives in it as well. So Okay. That would make sense too. So in summary, soap, washing soda, and an enzyme. That's easy. 
three ingredients. I feel like that's like a recipe on a blog about cooking quick desserts that won't kill you or something. Three ingredients. My three ingredient cheesecake. Exactly. I made three ingredient Nutella cookies. Ooh. They were actually pretty good for being like three ingredients. I Yeah. I think those are my favorite. The magic cookies that are just three ingredients. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. It took like 15 minutes. It was great. Okay, so I did all this chemistry for you. Thank you. Figured out what the heck laundry detergent is even made of. And then I found a gold mine of information on the Environmental Working Group's website. Ooh. The Environmental Working Group is this incredibly useful website that anybody even remotely interested in greenhouse keeping, green living, whatever, needs to know about. Because they rate each product from A to F. Ooh. Yeah. And there's tons of products, mostly cleaning products, but soaps and whatnot. So I think they have another section of like makeup and uh, skincare products and stuff too. But yeah. So it's like through looking at the Environmental Working Group's website, I figured out that even like a laundry detergent that says free and clear or eco-friendly it as possibly still terrible for you and for the environment. Uh, that's so infuriating. Uh-huh. And a lot of them that are rated F by the EWG, Environmental Working Group, were really shocking. Like Mrs. Myers, there was one clean day scent free laundry detergent. Right. Rated sounds, F. I know. I, I thought Mrs. Myers was like one of the great products to use. Yes. And so this specific detergent, and it, it really depends on the detergent. It's not a brand thing. It's the mm -hmm. product itself because it depends what they're putting in it. But this has some concern for asthma, skin allergies, moderate concern for the environment and, develop, and developmental and reproductive toxic toxicity, and then mm. acute aquatic to toxicity. Ew. This thing that says clean day, scent, for, scent free, laundry detergent, not good. <laughs> no. And so a lot of the Mrs. Myers products are better rated than that one, but none of them are an A. Oh. And there are, are a lot of Ds that come from that brand. That's not good. I know. It's really surprising. Um, and again, seventh generation, that's like the go-to for eco-friendly stuff, right? Wow. Yeah, it is. That's what everybody thinks, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they had, I think this one was actually discontinued, but it was the concentrated liquid laundry detergent with white flour and bergamot citrus. I think it was the white flour and bergam bergamot citrus, the extras that kind of got them because there was concern for developmental reproductive toxicity from the Yikes. boric acid. <laughs> yeah, there was like yeah. boric acid, moderate concern for aquatic toxicity so yeah seventh generation is another thing you get from whole foods and you think it's good because it's on the shelves at whole foods yes exactly and it says natural mm -hmm. on the label we should make a list of words that are just green hooey like yes absolutely and natural. yes we totally will do that we'll put it on insta and then so half of the seventh generation products that I researched are a B or above. So they're usually pretty good, but there are still quite a few Ds. The one, <laughs> the one that really bothered me was from Attitude Eco-Friendly Laundry Detergent. And there's another one from Costco, Kirkland. I think both of these may have been discontinued in the meantime, but another one, Kirkland Signature Environmentally Friendly Laundry Detergent. Mm -hmm. They both got Fs. <laughs> Environmentally friendly, my ass. Yeah. I mean, it's just crazy. Not so friendly. Environmentally unfriendly. Yeah. So I felt, after I did all this research, I felt totally scammed. I was like, what? This just feel, it felt like the man trying to stick it to me, honestly. Right. <laughs> yeah. like, He's sticking it back. <laughs> I need to stick it back. All right. <laughs> so I was like, what do I do? And then I figured out I could make my own. Nice. Yeah. I feel like there should be a sound effect for greening up my act. So I greened up my act. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's just like a circus music, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I searched for some recipes and I found some. I found one that I recommend, which I I told you already what's yes. in it because it's so mm-hmm. easy. Um, and there are similar ones that are pre-mixed powder detergents, but and those are better, but they're known for leaving white residue on your clothes. Oh, and nice. honestly, this one that I used even though it's got washing soda and it's powder, yeah. I have only had one si- – and I've been using it for over a year. I've only had one pair of shorts that for God knows why, I think it's the <laughs> fabric, they don't yeah. like the it's washing soda. bamboo viscose. Probably. Damn it. <laughs> I don't know what it is about those shorts, but that's the only thing that's ever had white residue on it. It was kind of interesting. So I wanted to go more DIY than those powder detergents because I, I don't know. I don't think they work that well. Yeah. And then I found this book from the Great British Bake Off's winner yes. named Nancy Bertwistle. I hope I'm saying her last name right. Not to Bertwistle. I think you have to say it with an English accent. Yeah, although that's probably offensive. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, England. So, um, yeah, the book is called Clean and Green, 101 Hints and Tips for a More Eco-Friendly Home. And this woman is my idol because... I mean, she can bake. And- she can bake. She can clean anything. Wow. literally it's wild you should follow her on instagram too because she has an amazing instagram like she cleans she pulls off ivy from the side of her house and throws it into her washing machine like cuts it up <sighs> throws it in her washing machine and cl- washes her clothes wow yeah how would you ever know this stuff if you're not learning I, it from i mean what yeah <laughs> it's amazing so yeah i recommend this book for sure we're definitely gonna link it in the notes yeah. show notes um <laughs> show notes show notes and she was the one that I got the recipe, the just dish soap and washing soda. That's it. And then she recommends green bleach for tough stains. And we're going to be talking about green bleach in an episode coming up. Yeah. So yeah, the dish soap, when I looked it up, like I said, same ingredients, at least super similar. So there's the one that I looked up was had an anionic surfactant, which works better in hard water, right. potentially not great for the water. Yeah. Um, it has glycerin, which is a foam stabilizer, has a pH adjuster, has preservatives. Yeah. And so it's got so much of what laundry detergent has. And I I got to tell you, I felt super weird just squeezing my bottle of dish soap in yeah. my... Yeah. <laughs> You're like, what? <laughs> but it, was, it works. I don't know. And then um, Arm & Hammer's washing soda in the yellow box. You can get it at hardware stores, grocery stores, or on Amazon. And it's eco-friendlier than other options the ewg gives it an a but there are harmful chemicals put out during production so it's not like i don't know it's not nothing's perfect right but right yeah i mean it's better what sacrifice you're making right yeah so but it has to be liquid dish detergent not like and not like not dish washer detergent like dish soap yes keep on your dish soap yeah definitely not the stuff you put in your dishwasher yeah (laughs) and by the way don't put dish soap in your dishwasher use dish detergent also that have you done that no i had a roommate who did and that we had a foam party in the kitchen basically oh Um, my god i thought that was just something in movies no no it (laughs) happens it was bad so funny you should use this one because it has a foam stabilizer but (laughs) yeah there you go keep it down keep the rave to yourself that's pretty crazy yeah not yeah dish soap like what you'll keep on your kitchen sink and wash your dishes by hand with yeah which we have to have another episode about because you shouldn't be washing dishes by hand. Anyway. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We got to talk about that. Okay. Yeah, we will. <laughs> so interesting. Okay. So the only thing Nancy didn't have in her recipe was the enzymes, but she also just doesn't use them. So it's like not that – I don't think, think it's yeah. that important. Yeah. And I can't imagine if she's in England, she's not like boiling hot water to – they're very – I well, I'm talking out of my left ear here, but – I don't feel like they heat up water to to do the wash all the time. <laughs> Wait, you mean like wash their clothes in the bathtub in the backyard? What are you say? No, no, no. I mean like <laughs> she's not using hot water wash on her clothes. Like, oh, her probably not. No, yeah, she's probably using cool water. So, yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> like, do you like? I'm like she does it in a tub and a kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> she heats Maybe. the water on the stove and she uses a stick to stir it in the. <laughs> Sorry, any English listeners. Sorry, England. <laughs> I'm sorry. We know that you also have washing machines. Um. Yeah. <laughs> they're apparently, well, I think in Australia, they're in the kitchen. That's Oh, the- interesting. That's what it was like for me in Italy in my yeah, apartment. Yeah, because that's where the water is. 
It makes a lot of sense, and it was the tiniest, cutest little washing machine. Yeah. I also broke it while I was there for five months, and we can talk about that later, but that was an interesting, (laughs) interesting time. Yeah. I'm just kind of an idiot, so. (laughs) Uh. (laughs) So, yeah, so the enzymes that I found were, they were hard to find. Like I said, I think there are more options now, but the ones I found were $24, not cheap, Mm -mm. and when I got it, So I was like, I got to try these at least. The bag was so small, like so tiny. And so I was like, I'm not sure that this is worth $24. And given you have to use like maybe a quarter, an eighth even of a teaspoon. Oh, that's like a pinch. It's like nothing. Yeah. So it has lasted me a while, but it's just like... I don't want to use it because I know that it feels like liquid gold. So I just like You're like don't saving use it. it. Yeah, yeah. Saving it for your special laundry. Yeah, it's so stupid. It's for the delicates. So yeah, so the recipe is get your pens and papers out. Ready? One tablespoon washing soda. Two tablespoons dish soap directly into the drum before you put anything else in. Then put your clothes on top, cold water, add enzymes if you want. And if you have heavy stains, you can add a tablespoon of green bleach into the detergent holder, not directly on your clothes, because even though it's green bleach, it's still bleach. Right. I learned that the hard way. (laughs) Those black shorts are now (laughs) zebra spots. (laughs) Pretty much. (laughs) But that's it. Like, wow. I also wrote dishwasher here. I'm clearly uh, yeah. confused. I'm like, oh, we're so confused. <laughs> what are we doing? Are we doing dishes? Or Eventually, we're just going to put all of our socks in the dishwasher. Yeah, there you go. Or just put in the washing for, machine. Exactly. Yeah. It's all the same. It's all the same soap. <laughs> yeah. So that's it, though. Just one tablespoon washing soda, two tablespoons, d- tablespoons dish soap. And I will be honest, I don't even measure anymore. You just squirt. Yep, squirt, squirt, and then... You're like an old school bartender, you count to five or whatever. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But it's not very much. Like, you really don't need very much. Um, yeah. It's pretty wild how little you need. So it's not an exact science. I feel like that's the most important takeaway because you can experiment. You can see what works for you. You're not going to break anything, like I said. And if you need a, if it's not working, use a little more. Yeah. You know sense. what I mean? Right. But if you use too much, it won't dry. <laughs> Right. But, right don't you so, yeah start small starts how do you how do you know it's working like how do i know yeah does it have do you have like because i like when i wash my clothes it's not like generally very it's not like i've been rolling in mud and i can see that like it got the mud out you know it's like okay oh. yes i actually have a really good example so my i have a dog and she yeah. smells she's just <laughs> smelly sorry baby yeah and we have this couch cover and Oh, no, no, no. It wasn't even the couch cover. It was a blanket that had literally – she had been – it's been like six months since I washed it. It smelled so bad. Mm-hmm. And it was a wool blanket, so it's not that easy Ooh. to get – yeah. Yeah. So I was like, oh, God. So I put it in cold water, used this exact thing. I didn't even use enzymes or anything. It came out smelling totally clean. Oh, wow. Didn't smell the dog at all. Nice. I was amazed. Yeah. There is one thing I wanted to note. Is it like sweaty smells? So normally – when you wash your clothes with like fragrant yeah. uh, laundry detergent, you're not going to smell the sweat, even though that sweat is still going to be in your clothing. It's just going to mm-hmm. be covered up by like flowers. Mm-hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and so this obviously doesn't have a scent. You can add maybe like a, a soap or something if you like your clothes to be scented. Yeah. They do have laundry soaps for that, but and then you can like grate them up and add them. I don't bother because I don't really like the smells, but yeah. So what I do for the sweaty smell is either soak my t-shirts in warm water and a half a cup of baking soda for an hour. Okay. That did help. Or you can create a paste of baking soda and water and apply directly to the pits Mm. and then let that sit for a minute and then throw it in. Okay. Baking soda is amazing. Baking soda does – I mean, it whitens your teeth. It it, It's actually a cure for um, heartburn too. Really? I mean, yeah. that makes sense because it's yeah, anti- basically an antacid, yeah. right? Yeah. It's basically, yeah. So interesting. Yeah, yeah. I love baking soda. We'll definitely talk about that too. Yeah. Okay. So like my my running clothes might need a little pre-soak. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, probably. 
I mean, or people could just not be near me when I'm running. Yeah. How, that? How would you ever think of that? Get away from me. Get If it bothers you, you need to be <laughs> further away. Yeah. Social distancing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The other option is if you don't want to feel like badass chemist, which I totally did, and <laughs> I loved it, you can look on EWG's list of verified or A-rated. So they have like a verification, which doesn't mm-hmm. necessarily mean that they're better, honestly. It's kind of better. It depends on the product, right? Right. But anything rated an A, you're probably going to – you're doing pretty well, right? Nice. Yeah. And so because – the annoying takeaway is that it's not, like I mentioned, it's not a brand thing. You can't go by the brands. Yeah, because it's different each product, yeah. Yeah, so there is one called Aspen Clean, and every product that they have is either certified or rated an A by the EWG. And I used to use them a lot for almost everything, but they're just so expensive that I kind of... Yeah, that's the problem, right? Yeah, I just kind of was like, yeah, there's got to be some other way to do this. But if you don't have time to do that, eat, even like look up all the stuff, which I get, there's another option that's much easier and you're going to get like a better version. You're probably not going to get the best, but you're going to get like at least not terrible of a product. Mm-hmm. So the EPA has a label and it's called Safer Choice. And oh. this is going to be directly on the bottle or the product or whatever you're buying. And it's just this little label that says Safer Choice. And I actually took the time to do the research and compare it with the Environmental Working Group. And all the products that I looked at that were safer choice products lined up with Environmental Working Group rates of C or higher. Okay. So that's better, right? Like, Yeah. We don't want um, these the pro- Yeah. So I looked at some products rated D and they did not have the safer choice label. So... We, you know, we can post a picture of that label on Instagram. So if you're just out and about and you don't have time to like do all this research, which I, duh, I mean, who does? Yeah, right. That's the whole point of this podcast. Exactly. Then um, you can spot that label. So that has been really helpful for me. And I think it's like nobody really knows about that. So yeah, I'm, I hadn't even considered it. Right. Yeah. That's a really easy thing to do is just look for that label. Yeah, totally. And it's going to be maybe not perfect, but better. Right. Okay. Cost Speaking wise. Cost, yeah. If, if Aspen Clean is a kabillion yeah, dollars. Yeah, Aspen Clean is insane. Yeah. But it works so well, honestly. If you're willing to spend the money, it works really well. All right. So one 64 load container of Tide costs around $13. I think I looked at Target. Yeah. The eco friendly versions that I found cost between 13 and 23 bucks. Ugh. And who's to say that they work? Because some of these eco friendly. First off, they might not be eco-friendly. Right, but right. There's friends of Smokey the Bear, as you say it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But second, they, you know, they might not actually function well. Right. They might not work. Mm-hmm. They might not clean your clothes. So between the washing soda and the eco-friendly dish soap that I got, which I actually got the seventh generation one, and I only realized after learning that the anionic enzymes, yeah, anionic en- enzymes are not the best. Um, right. That this one that I had been buying, I've been buying it for a year and it's rated a C. So it's not terrible, but there are a couple ingredients in it that aren't great. So I'm going to switch to a different one. But anyway, if you're looking for an eco-friendly dish soap, I'll sw- I'll link the one that I'm going to use Okay, in the show notes if you're curious, if you just want to yeah, like, click. Yeah, oh, I have, I just bought dish soap last week and it's from our local grocery store, H-E-B. And I haven't, I have to look and see if it has the little logo on it. I don't think it does. But it does say like free and clear, you know. Whatever. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's what the seventh generation one was. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, wait, shoot. Maybe it's not great. But but it's better. You know, it's yeah. not not terrible. So between the washing soda, the dish soap, it's about 9 to $10 for probably more than 64 loads. It's really yeah. impossible to tell how many loads you're actually going to get. Yeah. But I would say... I think probably because I'm trying to think how quickly I use. I think it's probably about maybe equal. I would estimate. Huh. So cheaper. It's a little bit cheaper. It's not like oh my god, you're saving so much money. But right. So you know, if you throw in the extras like the enzymes, you're definitely not saving money. But yeah. or the green bleach, although you'd have to use like regular bleach. So the cost is like not that different, but potentially a little bit cheaper. Um, it's really the other parts of it that are much better. And so if you don't feel like doing this at all and you don't want to deal with it, there's these laundry pods called Drops with two Ooh. Ps. We'll link it. And that has enzymes already in it. So if you don't want to deal with it, then you can just buy those. 
I don't, I didn't look up the price. They're probably not super cheap, but yeah, they don't even list the price. I'm just looking now. They don't even list it on the. <laughs> yeah, that might be why I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> you have like, to like Whoa. go through and they have fabric softener too, which is another story we should probably talk about. Yeah, really. Okay. So my rating for this for homemade laundry detergent, we rate every product on a, on a scale of one to five granolas. Mm-hmm. And the crunchier, the better, because clearly you want your granola to be crunchy. As crunchy as possible. Yeah. yeah. And so one is bad, five is great. I am rating homemade laundry detergent a five, which is break your tooth off crunchy. Wow. Yeah. Because it's a little bit cheaper, better for the environment. <clears throat> Try that again. <laughs> because it's a li- little cheaper, better for the environment. It's more work, but not that much more, to yeah. be honest. Because, I mean, I, I kind of I hope I did the work for you. I tried. Yeah, this is a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, who nobody has time for this. It's crazy. And it's simpler. Like, that's the thing I like about it the most, I think, is that it simplifies. I was so sick of buying, like, oh, my God, I got to order Tide. Oh, my God, I got to order right. this to clean my kitchen sink. Oh, my God, I got to order that. It's like I have, like, four products that I use for so many different things, and washing soda is one of them. Yeah. That's so, so and then, you know, dish soap I use for my dishes and for my laundry, so it's great. Yeah, I would say don't be afraid to give it a go. Follow <laughs> me into the light. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we have three ingredient cookies. <laughs> Plus, you can wash your clothes after you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah. And you said you did it, right? You tried yeah, it? So I did. I did try it today. So, and same thing. I didn't want to interrupt while you were talking about it, but I washed, I washed some sheets and towels and my dog, my dog's bed cover. Oh. Yeah. So I used the washing soda, which was five bucks at the grocery store, and then the HEB free and clear lavender, whatever dish soap. I measured it, which means I had to like wipe out the tablespoon, you know, after uh-huh. you. But what's great about it is it's just dish soap. So you just go and rinse it in the sink and it's right. clean. Right. Yes. Like, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 You just wash your spoon. <laughs> just wash my spoon. So, um, but I did. And yeah, the dog bed doesn't smell. Oh, awesome. Because I washed it. I was like, oh, he's my old, old man dog, old Emmett. He smells. I washed him too. Not with dish soap, but <laughs> I will say my grandfather I actually used dish soap yeah, when I ran My out grandfather of dog. used to he used to say, You gotta use lemon joy. It kills the ticks. So Oh my God. So it probably does, let's be honest. Yeah. I would smother them <laughs> with the surfactants. <laughs> <laughs> now we know. And there it is. Yeah. So yeah, it worked. It did work. Um and I do okay, but I did my ex husband bought some really bougie laundry detergent and it's uh-huh. been it's been three years, so it's been a while, and I still have it. But I use it on my sheets, and I I changed the sheets today, and it the, the smell. It's kind of like this nice cologne. So uh-huh. I was like, that's nice. I'd like to find a way to like do the the scented the laundry smells smell nice. Yeah, I do like. Yeah, that. I understand. Um, not in my that. clothes as much because it battles your perfume, right? But in my bed, and I don't even know. I doubt that that brand was eco. He probably just read about it on Twitter and was like, I need to smell good. So he thought that's probably why he got it. But Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it is hard. You can also do like, I don't know, you know how we feel about essential oils, but you yeah. could do like little spritz. Yeah. I used to do that on my pillow, but then I was like, mm. yeah, I'm like sometimes it fine. Okay. You know. Right. Or yeah, like I said, there is soap that you can buy. Um, yeah, those drops of like yeah, there's a lot of options. Um, you might be able to even put essential oils into the – I think some people do that. I think they mix essential oils with the washing soda. Yeah. And that might work. And then there's also Felsnaphtha. Felsnap. I don't know how you say it. It's really old school soap, like a bar of laundry oh, soap. Felsnaphtha. Yeah, I see it. Okay. Yes. It's like something my great-grandmother would have used. But yeah. um, that's an option. It smells soapy. It's not very good for you, though. So I, no, I looked okay. it up. I was like, yeah, I like the like, smell. And I was like, oh, I so hope that this is blah, blah, Because I was grading that up for a while in my, like, the laundry detergent. Yeah. And I was, like, mixing it into its own thing. And then I read that, that what, it's got some crap in it that you don't well, – that it isn't great. So Naphtha, the, what made it naphtha was a skin and eye irritant. But now they no longer use naphtha. They use terpene hydrocarbons. So I don't know if those are <laughs> – I don't know. I feel like I looked it up on the environmental working group, but. And it's like, no, maybe don't. I'm curious now. Okay, rating. I got it. Da, 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 da. Oh, it's a flammable liquid hydrocarbon mixture. Hmm. Natural gas condensates, petroleum. Petroleum distillates and the distillation of coal tar and peat. It's kind of like when they used to, like, 
use lye. Yeah, I was thinking that lye. Yeah, because it that's made from ash, right? Yeah. Okay, so Felsnap is is rated not bad actually. It's a C. Okay, but the fragrant the fragrance is the problem. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, and then some other things. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Well, a lot of eh, it's a mixed bag, but yeah. Um, if you want some smells and you don't mind a little some things in it, then try that. Or there, I mean, there's other options. I think they're actually Nancy recommended um in her book. Our girl Nancy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, our girl. Uh, come on the show. Uh, she recommended uh, vegan laundry soap. So okay, possibly better. I don't know. I haven't looked into it. Vegan laundry soap. That's not something I ever thought I would have to. I know. So many vegan things. <sighs> vegan laundry soap. Yeah, it's like gluten-free laundry soap. I guess that might be a thing. <laughs> gluten-free water. Exactly. Yeah. We talked about gluten-free water. Yeah, we did. So we did. It, it's, it's a thing, and it's kind of interesting. All right. Well, thank you. I know. So next week, we're talking about wool dryer balls. Yes. Which I stan. Not to give it away, but I do. I'm a wool dryer ball stan. Yeah, me too. Since we're on a laundry kick, but awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then in two weeks, um, I'm going to be chatting about, I'm going to tell you all about green bleach. I am just stoked. Yeah. yeah, it's supposed to be a more eco-friendly version of chlorine bleach, and I had an adventure with it, so we'll cover <laughs> all the things about it, and that'll be interesting. Oh, 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 and I'm going to be talking about sun bleaching. That's huge. Yes, honestly, I, life-changing. Yeah, I put, that's what I do when I wash the dog's bed, is I put the pillow things, like the stuffing interior, out outside so in the sun. So smart. And then, yeah, when I wash the cover, and that way, get a little sun bleaching out of it. That is so smart. Thank you. Thank thank you. I do have <laughs> advanced degrees, as we both do, in fine arts. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah, I'm excited about that one, too. Awesome. So, yes. Yeah. So, if you, you know, be sure to subscribe yep. to our podcast wherever you listen. Get that ding. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, and we have not figured out how to sign off on this yet, yeah. but we'll get have there. A, green it up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Have a green one. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna go drink my green tea now. Oh, yeah. I had green tea. It wasn't green tea. It was green tea. <laughs> you just had tea tea. Tea tea. Yeah, meal. Tea tea. Okay. Yeah, so we'll, we'll eventually figure out how to sign yeah. off. Um, but yeah, this was super fun. Um, thank you for listening to my lots of chemistry. No, thank you, you for it. doing the work. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Anytime. All right. All righty. Good night. Good night. Good night.